This is Phys 2320 Computing 2, and this is the second unit from the SciPy series of video tutorials. And in this unit, we're dealing with data. Um, in particular, we're looking at interpolation and splines. So the Jupyter Notebook from which the slide shown in this video were generated uh, is available to University of Leeds students registered on the module um, for download from the pages on Minerva. Um, and these notes are also available as a PDF. Okay, so the first part then will be uh, just talking about the introduction to um, some of the things you have to think about when you're dealing with sample data. So what do we mean by sample data? Well, in a physics experiment, we're usually dealing with data that we have measured at particular intervals. So we've sampled our, our data, um, meaning that although we might know that in principle, that, that whatever it is we're measuring can be represented with a continuous function, or at least continuous so long as you're not going to deal with quantum mechanical effects. Um, but for kind of ordinary scale of things, um, you can treat it as a continuous function. In practical terms, you can only measure that function at particular instances in time. So for example, if you're doing some kind of mechanics experiment, tracking an object as a function of time, you might only be able to go and record that object every, say, half a second. Uh, and so you know exactly where it is every half second, but in between, you're assuming that it's going to have varied, pretty obviously it should have varied continuously between the points you've measured, but you've not actually ever measured it there. But if you later need to go and know where was it at those intermediate times, then you have to do interpolation of your measurements. You have to figure out some way of estimating where the value would have been had you been able to do a measurement at the intervening points. So without kind of having any particular insight to the problem or knowing anything exactly about what's going on, then really the only thing you can sensibly go and do is join the dots with straight lines. So in this example I'm showing on the screen here, the black points are the ones we measured and the red points are the ones we'd like to estimate where they are. And so you can just draw a straight line between the black points and then work out where on that line the red points should fall. And that is interpolating your data. And specifically, it's linearly interpolating your data. Now, if you had lots and lots of measurements and you know that, for example, if there's a mechanics experiment, the rate of acceleration is quite small, then joining the dots with straight lines is probably a fairly good approximation to um, where the, the object you track is at any given time. But actually what you could do is you could apply a bit of physics knowledge and go, well, okay, let's at least assume a constant acceleration, even if it isn't small, in which case I know that the position should follow something like ut plus a half at squared. And therefore I should expect that the, um, rather than joining the black dots with straight lines, I ought to be joining them with parabola in some way. Um, and so I should be able to go and make a nice smooth parabola um, and get a better estimate of where things are. But OK, why do you want to know where the, the, the measurement was in between the points you measured it? Well, suppose, for example, that you've done two sets of measurements um, of two different objects, but inevitably they're going to be done at slightly different times. It wouldn't be possible maybe to synchronize them absolutely perfectly. And then you want to compare between those two different sets of data. But you can't just subtract, in this case, the black dots from the dark green dots because they're not at the same time. You're not comparing like with like. So instead, what you need to go and do is to interpolate either the black dots to find where that data set would have been at the same time as the green dots. Or I guess you could interpolate the green dots and work out where it should have been at the time you had the black dots. Um, and then you're in a position you can go and compare those two sets of data. And there are lots of similar circumstances where you're going to need to go and work out where um, something was at this intermediate sort of position. So interpolation is a sort of a fact of life of dealing with experimental data sometimes. So that's why you need to be able to go and know how to go and do this. 
So SciPy provides a whole bunch of functions for interpolation, and they all live within SciPy.interpolate. That's the module of all the functions that we're going to use, and I'll be showing you. Before we go any further, however, there is a caveat that we do need to go and say. So essentially, when you're interpolating, you are inventing data points. Um, I mean, you might have a good reason to think they're quite a close estimate, but they are only an estimate of where things were going to be. Um, and they're an estimate which is limited by how well you can interpolate. If you actually understand something about the physics of the situation you've, you've got these data points from, so it might be a, a physics of a calculation or, or a simulation or a, um, or a real measurement. If you understand the actual equations that should be governing how that data should be changing, then you're in a position where you could go and fit, you can make a model of how those data points should be based a mathematical model based on the equations. And you can fit that mathematical model to um, a set of data. So the bottom line is you should only use interpolation and splines, and I'll show you later on, when you don't have a good physical model uh, for the data. If you have a good physical model for the data, you should use curve fitting, which we'll talk about in unit four, um, in order to get a estimate of those intermediate values that actually makes use of the underlying physics of the situation you're trying to deal with. And that's always, always, always better than using an interpolation or a spline. But sometimes, of course, you're in situations where you don't know ahead of the time uh, how those um, should be varying. And so you can't do that fitting of a physical model to your data. You have to um, instead use interpolation and splines. <laughs> 